Hello, hello guys. Just a quick video. Want to give an update on how I felt after the nine day fast and just what it did for me. I, I think uh, Sunday was the last day, but I felt like I understood more about me because when I, when I decided that I was going to do it, I had a, just a lot of nervous feelings about things, you know, just control issues. That's what that is. And just different things I, I worried about. My oldest son had been just very, very sick. I mean, on death's bed. He, he came out, came through it. Um, had to go to Mayo Clinic. And I mean, during that time where George Floyd had got killed, he was going through it. I just was just ill, sick about him being so ill. But he came through. Thank God for that. And now <laughs> he and his wife are moving to Mexico. And I just always oh, just made my stomach flip. I just couldn't understand that. And I, I just didn't want him to do that because when he was, he graduated from high school, he and I argued about what colleges he was going to. He had letters from, I don't know how many colleges recruiting him. Notre Dame and, and oh, Mexico, Colorado, football scholarship and I just I don't I didn't couldn't see him leaving town because I know he wasn't ready. He was just a wild child, and we fought we fought about that. And I told him you are not going to win. You're going to stay right here in Dallas and go to school here. I said because you're not ready to get out there. Oh, he was so mad. School started like that August, late August, by October. He, he got real sick with the flu. I mean, and he caught me and the mama, I'm so sick, I'm so sick, I want to come home. And he came home, I mean, 10 minute drive to the house. But he came and climbed into bed with me and I said, you know, if you weigh in Notre Dame and, and all these different schools, you couldn't fly, you couldn't come home. He said, I'm so glad I'm here, mama. He got better uh, over the flu, but he un finally understood. Because I told him, I said, Keith, we don't have the money to fly you back home on vacations. You're going to be sitting there in these schools, and you can't you can't come home. Your scholarship doesn't pay for all of that. But he understood, and I found myself trying to play that same role. You can't move to Mexico. You can't do this and that. And after the fast, I realized that I had to just relax. Because he's been, the universe, God is taking care of him through all of this. So, Mary, let go. You're not running nothing. You're not making nothing happen. This man is grown. And I said, okay, but after the fast, I realized I have to just let these negative thoughts don't entertain them. Because you can, at least I can, I can take a negative thought. And not even realize that it's negative and say, hmm, I'm, I'm thinking that I'm on to something real good. Oh, this is real. That's true. That's going to happen. This is the voice in my head. It's not the the voice I tell you about of the divine. This is, this is the other side of me telling me this stuff. And I'm entertaining it. And before you know it, my stomach is flipping and I'm calling people and and asking questions of, do you remember this and this and this? And just just making confusion because of a thought that I had. I'm playing detective with some some stuff that ain't even real. So I, I'm, I realized that doing that fast, that that's what I have got to let go of negative thoughts. Because negative thoughts... They come in and you entertain them and give them space. Next thing you know, you are building around this negative thought. And this thought has taken up and it is making 
everything real because I'm creating it. This is my my show. I'm creating a show with negative thinking. So I, I realized that. That's one thing I realized. And then I was thinking about creating things and how the people that I met that helped me. And I was thinking about the lady that introduced me to Reiki. My massage therapist, her name was, is Sharon. I'm saying was, but she's transitioned now. But I didn't know that. And I was thinking about her real hard one day last week. And I said, oh, I wish I could find Sharon. That's her name. And I said, what in the world is her last name? I couldn't think. I know it was a German name or something. I couldn't think of a name to even look her up. So I just let that thought go. And the next day, I'm looking in my bookshelf, and I'm just looking at this. I said, oh, this, I said, where did this Ragley book come from? And I picked it up, and this is the book, Creating Money. And it's a real good book. And when I opened it, that's her last name, Sharon Scott Nikki. And I said, it does something. I mean, yesterday I was trying to figure out what her last name was. And here it is right here, Sharon. And I looked uh, for her and it seems like she's passed on because I, I saw a lot of uh, the funeral uh, things that she passed away. If this is the same Sharon Scott Nikki, she passed away in, I think, 2009. But... She was a, a great massage therapist and just, just a good person. And she helped me so much. And she didn't massage a lot of black people back then. That was in the mid-90s. And somehow or another, we bonded. And she introduced me to a whole lot of other people that were in the, uh, the community of uh, Gnostic community and just different bookstores. I She introduced me to that. And I was just thinking about her. And it's amazing how you ask a question and the next day or even a couple of minutes later, you have the answers. So the fasting was good. And I don't know, here and even after the fast, I find myself not eating after 11 anyway. Uh, and a lot of times I'm still in bed and so I eat my breakfast around 11, 30 or 12. So it really wasn't anything different, but it was the fact that I was conscious of myself and I kind of watched my step and everything that I was doing, even driving and going to the store and putting on the mask and I'm just meditating and thinking good thoughts uh, for everybody in the store because they feel the same way I feel. It's like the mask, you put it on and it's just a burden and there you are trying to breathe and just, it's just no, it's different, very different. So being out is a stress on everybody and I, I realize that too. So I, I'm learning how to, well, I'm going to say learning, I'm remembering how to meditate while I'm doing things. I'm meditating even when I'm pushing my basket down the aisle and making a decision of what I want. I'm still meditating while I'm driving, but paying attention to what's really going on. So that's what the fast did for me. It helped me to be more aware. And uh, I don't know. Uh, I usually do this fast the first of the month. I don't know why. It's just a good day to start for me because you're paying your bills. So I usually do it on the first of the month until the nine days in the first month. But in a, in a deeper meditation and a deeper phase of the fast, I do the Psalms 91 and... I'll read it, and at 4 o'clock, I'll do my candles and meditate on Psalms 91. That's the way 
I'm gonna I do the fast when I'm fasting by myself. But I'm I'm glad those of you who could do it and even if you didn't do it, I'm just glad that you uh encouraged me. But I was thinking a little I was gonna read, you know, I always read I'm always reading something. This book, this this book, Creating Money helped me so much back in the 90s when I was reading it. It, it, oh man, I don't even know where to start, but the, the chapters, I'm just going to read a little bit about abundance. The part about abundance says, I picture abundance for myself and others. Picture yourself having everything you want, a satisfying job, money in the bank, a wonderful relationship. See how you would be a benefit to those around you. Imagine what it would be like if everyone knew you had money and their lives were working. Challenge yourself to ask for even more, not just for yourself, but for all of mankind. Now, I thought about that and when I concentrate on money and thinking about having abundance, I can say, I say to myself, okay, I know I'm going to take care of my family and I'm going to do this and that and that. And, you know, everybody has these family members that just kind of on the uh, rough side. And then I'll, I'll say, oh, but what are we going to do about them? And then I say, and they got crazy friends. And next thing you know, they'll be holding people hostage and, and for ransom. And it's like, I'm regurgitating the the abundance that I just proclaimed. And I said, oh, I don't know if I want money. And that's the thing about it. When you are thinking about what you want, you are going to create it. But you can't create something and tear it down before it's finished. So that's what I was doing. I mean, like, because, you know, you, I, I actually would put it on paper and how much so and so and so and so getting they getting a hundred thousand and they getting and then you think about your kids it's like whoa this is too much okay so now let me <laughs> I got off subject it says for instance if you have been wanting a better job picture that everyone who has been waiting wanting one will get one also if you want to serve in a larger way such as drawing more students in your classes. Imagine that everyone who is asking for a greater opportunity to serve through getting more students is also succeeding. This will teach you that there is true abundance in the universe for everyone and help you connect your abundance with thoughts of abundance for everyone else. And that was the thing I couldn't do. I, I would create an and I, I've, I've had money. I've had plenty of money in my lifetime. But did I keep it? No. Because I had it and, and felt guilty about it. That's what it was. I had guilt with it and just had to give it away. Here, you don't have here, here, here. Take this. And I, I won't do that anymore. I'll teach people how to achieve, make money, but I'm not going to just uh, brag about how much money I have and what I'm doing with it and all that. So, but I'm, I'm, I'm a very generous person, but I just, you just have to be careful with what you, how you create your stuff. Cause it, it, believe it or not, everything we do is a form of creating. So that, that's a good part of what I learned about uh, creating. I really did that, and I remember that. And I'm just going to work on that aspect of recreating things, abundance to come into my life, and uh, me not feeling guilty about having it. That's, that's what it is. And, you know, I, I, I'm at the age now where m money cometh in... There's nothing, not too much that I want, but I'm still a generous person. So it's, it's coming. Money, money is coming. Money cometh. So anyway, 
I'm going to get off here, but I was just letting you guys know about the fast and how good it was for me. I'm going to do a video with my friend. He's he, he's kind of shy, but he has a, a wonderful book, and I help him make it. I help because, oh man, this book is, his name of it is Powerful Quotes, and we're going to do a video together about it and we uh, we I want to keep him encouraged about the book you know so be on the lookout for that okay and I'll see you guys next time bye bye